رسول الله حبيب الله الله our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he wanted humans to be the best and give his best religion to them Allah our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he wanted humans to be the best السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى لا سيما المصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا I praise Allah the Almighty alone and I send the best peace and blessings upon his most beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Dear viewers everywhere, welcome to a new edition, to a new live edition of your program, Gardens of the Pious. Uh, obviously, the episodes during Ramadan uh, were pre-recorded, but Alhamdulillah, now we're resuming, and our programs will be during this time of every day uh, until uh, there is a clearance of the curfew here in Cairo, Egypt or all over Egypt, basically. Our phone numbers for those who would like to uh, contact us uh, live today, inshallah, the phone number beginning with the area code 00202, uh, 0100246458383, and the alternative number is 0020125008679, and the email address is gardens at huda.tv. Barakallahu feekum. Uh, we almost finished uh, the chapter or the book of patience, As-Sabr. Uh, we'd only tackle one hadith, which is the 53rd hadith in the book of patience. And afterward, inshaAllah, Azzajal will begin soon after that in the next book, which is a book of truthfulness or Bab al -Sadr. The last hadith which we're tackling today is narrated by the great companion, عبد الله بن أبي أوفى رضي الله عنهما عن أبي إبراهيم عبد الله بن أبي أوفى رضي الله عنهما أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في بعض أيامه التي لقي فيها العدو انتظر حتى إذا مالت الشمس قام فيهم فقال يا أيها الناس لا تتمنوا لقاء العدو واسألوا الله العافية فإذا لقيتموهم فاصبروا واعلموا أن الجنة تحت ظلال السيوف ثم قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم منزل الكتاب ومجري السحاب وهازم الأحزاب اهزمهم وانصرنا عليهم عبد الله ابن أبي أوفى من الله بيبليز وذهم أن هيز فاضر reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at one time when he confronted the enemies on the battlefield and he was waiting for the sun to move away from its median not to sit rather to cool off a little bit because it was like midday and it was extremely hot so the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was waiting for the right time to start the confrontation to have mercy on his companions the Prophet وسلم, then stood up and said, O people, do not long for encountering the enemy and supplicate to Allah to grant you security or al -afiyah. But when you face the enemy, show patience and steadfastness and keep in mind that paradise lies under the shade of the swords. Then the Prophet وسلم, invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, O oh Allah, revealer of the book, disperser of the clouds, defeater of the confederates, put our enemy to defeat and help us to overpower them and to defeat them. The hadith is agreed upon its authenticity and it is collected by both Al-Bukhari uh, wa Muslim. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi is teaching us some very serious and important lessons in this hadith. Number one, 
The hadith explains that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was already on the battlefield and before confronting the enemies, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was waiting for the right time in order to have mercy on his followers. Because you know, in midday in the peninsula, it is extremely hot, whether in summer or in winter, let alone in summer. So he waited until the sun malat, malat moved away further away from its meridian an hour or a couple hours after noon then the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam taught the companions a very important lesson which is even though we're here on the battlefield and we're ready to fight our enemies but he said لا تتمنوا لقاء العدو do not long for confronting the enemies or fighting. Fighting isn't the ultimate goal of the believers. Rather, the ultimate goal is al-'afiyah. What is al-'afiyah? What does it mean? Earlier, we mentioned its literal meaning as security, but it isn't just mere security. Its meaning is much greater and broader than being limited to security. Its security, its safety, its health, its uh, being self-sufficient, it's being in good conditions. So it is the opposite of sickness, al-'afiyah. It is the opposite of war, peace, al-'afiyah. It is the opposite of fear, al-'afiyah. It is the opposite of poverty, al-'afiyah. And that's why the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam very oftenly used to make this invocation in regular days, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every day in the morning and in the evening three times Allahumma inni as'aluka al-'afwa wal-'afiyata fi dunya wal-akhirah Wallah I ask you for al-'af to pardon me and al-'afiyah which is safety, security, health, good provision, good conditions, peace, comfort, peace of mind, you name it that is the meaning of al-'afiyah to be exempt from being tested, from being tried to be in good conditions, in an excellent condition. Does it mean that the person is afraid to fight? Or a Nabi did not want to fight? No, it doesn't mean so. Read the rest of the hadith. Rather, the Prophet teaches the companions and us, rather the whole world. Fighting isn't the goal of Muslims. The goal is to reach to the state of Al-Islam which is submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will result in peace, comfort, prosperity, and every good thing. But once we have to fight, then we have to fight. Once we have to confront the enemies, then we have to show courage and to be brave and to remain steadfast. يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا لقيتم فئة فاثبتوا واذكروا الله كثيرا لعلكم تفلحون Look at the balance We who believe whenever you confront your enemies فاثبتوا Show steadfastness and remain steadfast on the battlefield فاثبتوا And in order to accomplish this thabat and steadfastness and maintain it واذكروا الله كثيرا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And remember Allah much in order to be successful في الدنيا والآخرة So we do not long for fighting We do not long for bloodshed We don't want to But if we have to If that is the last resort We have to defend our deen Our belief Our soil Our bodies Our families Our wealth Then let it be And after words, Allah al Afiyah, then a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَإِذَا لَقِيتُ مُوهُمْ But if you happen to confront them and there is no choice but to confront your enemies, فَاصْبِرُوا Then be patient. Because war is all about death, disease, poverty, loss of beloved ones, uh, destruction so it isn't like a journey it isn't a picnic it's a lot of suffering it's a lot of pain 
to yourself as well as to the enemies. And that's why all of that has to be confronted and met with patience or otherwise the person may lose patience and may lose along with that everything. And that is the ultimate loss. فَإِذَا لَقِيْتُمُوهُمْ فَاصْبِرُوا وَعْلَامُوا And keep in mind, and you have to be aware of the following fact, that paradise lies beneath the shade of the swords. So if you have to fight, if you have to declare jihad, if you have to defend yourselves, your family members, your religion, your faith, your belief, etc., then rejoice. Because it is either one of two, either victory, and this is the goal that you're fighting for, to achieve your goal of victory and establishing your Muslim state, or the other one which is even greater, a shahada, martyrdom, to die for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you happen, if you happen to gain the second one, which is a shahada or martyrdom, then keep in mind that paradise lies under the shade of swords. Those who die for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would most certainly enter paradise, will feel no pain whatsoever at the time of their death, will be given a long list of virtues extended not just to themselves, but to their family members, as in the hadith, وَيُشَفَّعُ فِي سَبْعِينَ مِنْ أَهْلِ بَيْتَهِ He will be given the power of intercession for 70 of his family members, simply to take them out of fire into paradise. Because of the virtues of the martyrdom, this one single person experienced for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In ayah number 169 of Surah Al Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتًا بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ The following ayah. فَرِحِينَ بِمَا آتَاهُمْ رَبِّ آتاهم الله من فضله ويستبشرون بالذين لم يلحقوا بهم من خلفهم ويستبشرون بالذين لم يلحقوا بهم من خلفهم ألا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون يستبشرون بنعمة من الله وفضل وأن these are three ayat of Surah Al Imran confirming that statement in the hadith, which is keep in mind that Al Jannah lies under the shade or beneath the shade of the swords. O you who believe, don't you think that those who have gotten killed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are dead? No. Nay, they are not dead. Rather, they are alive with the Lord being provided by the Lord in paradise. Not only that, فَرِحِينَ بِمَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ They rejoice. They are very delighted with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon them and gave them out of His bounty. وَيَسْتَبِشِرُونَ بِالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ and they want to deliver this bishara, glad tiding and good news to those who are still alive, min khalfihim, to tell them what? Don't be afraid. Don't you feel sad. We are in a much better condition. We are alive with our Lord. And don't you be frightened because here is better than your place. Yastabishiruna bi ni'matin min Allahi wa fadl. Rejoicing, and they want to deliver the good news to those who are still alive that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon them the greatest grace out of His bounty. And Allah does not waste the word of the believers. That is the meaning of Then the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before announcing the confrontation with the enemies, he sought the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَعِدُّ لَهُمْ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ مِنْ قُوَّةٍ وَمِنْ رِبَاطِ الْخَيْلِ تُرْهِبُونَ بِهِ عَدُوَّ اللَّهِ وَعَدُوَّكُمْ 
This ayah contains a magnificent secret, which is, what does it mean first? It says, and prepare as far as military preparation for your enemies, as much as you can afford, whatever it takes, of power, of horses, of men, of means, of weapons, in order to fight against your enemies, in order to frighten the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your enemies. The secret is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say you have to be equivalent to your enemies in power. No. He did not say you have to achieve the same achievement as far as the military preparation as your enemies. No. Rather he said do your best, exert your maximum effort as much as you can afford. That is the greatest news in this ayah. You do this and you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did. So he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, invoking him via the means of approach. The means of approach in this dua were simply an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa invoked Allah by his infinite power. Number one, he's the one who sent down the wahi reveal the revelations, whether the Qur'an or the previous books, the Torah, the Gospel, the Zabur, Suhuf Ibrahim, etc. And this is a great blessings in order to give guidance to mankind, to those whom Allah likes to be rightly guided. The number two, Mujri as sahab You see the clouds hanging between the heavens and the earth? Have you ever been airborne and the plane is going through the clouds? And you see like cotton surrounding the plane from every direction. That you can see anything around but cotton. Going up or going down or flying horizontally in the midst of the clouds sometimes. Have you seen this beautiful scene? Did you ever ask yourself how much would a, a cloud weigh? How much particles of water that it carries? It's very heavy. So how come that... This cloud is hanging in between the heavens and the earth. Who's holding it? Who's holding all the clouds? Not only that, rather who's moving the clouds? It is the disperser of the clouds. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who disperses the clouds according to his wish. We started before in the hadith, a man was in the middle of the desert and he heard a caller from heaven. He does not see the source of the sound or the voice, but he heard the sound was addressing a cloud in the middle of the desert. And he heard, Isqi hadiqata fulan, irrigate the garden of so and so. Then he said, all of a sudden, the cloud changed its course. So he followed the cloud until it reached somewhere, then it dropped its rain water. Allahu Akbar. Who is the disperser of the rain, of the clouds? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is called ayatun kawniya, a universal sign. Sending down the books, the revelations, the guidance, is a legitimate sign. Ayatun shar'iya, to show us the proofs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that He is the only true God who is worthy of worship. He is the Lord, He is the only Lord. Then showing us the universal signs, we mentioned repeatedly that there are two books of guidance have been given to mankind. Al-Wahy, the revelation, in the form of the Qur'an and the previous books, which haven't been changed, or before they had been changed and altered. And the second source of guidance is the second open book, which is a universal book. You don't have to be illiterate. You don't have to be professional or a PhD holder or studied in Harvard in order to be capable to understand the verses of this book. Simply every person, even the illiterate one, can look at the verses, the signs of this book and reflect upon them. That is called the universal book. The sun, the moon, كُلٌّ فِي فَلَكٍ يَسْبَحُونَ each floating in their orbit by the leave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the day and the night and their alternation, the stars, the different seasons, 
the fruits and vegetations, the life and death, everything around us, the heavens, the earth, the microorganisms, all of that, these are all universal science. Al-ayat al Amongst al-ayat al is sahab the means of mercy, the means of life. Wa mujriya sahab So the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa invoked Allah prior to confronting the enemies by or via the means of approach. Ayatun shara'iya. Oh Allah, munzil al-kitab. Then ayatun kawniya. Universal science. Oh Allah, mujriya sahab. And physical signs that the believers have experienced Hazimal Ahzab. O Allah, the defeater of the confederates. What does it mean? They haven't experienced before. Remember? Remember this ayat talking about the battle of the confederates, Ghazwat al Ahzab. A whole surah was revealed in the Quran called Surah Al Ahzab or the confederates, which is also known as Ghazwat al Khandaq, the battle of the trench. Because uh, the believers all of a sudden found themselves surrounded with an army of 10,000. The peninsula have never seen any army such uh, like this army. And guess what? Funded by the Jews and allies of the different Arab tribes. Does this remind you of anything? Yeah, it does. It does remind us of what is going on nowadays. The battle of the confederates. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the conditions of the believers as follows. They have come against you from every direction, from above and from beneath you, يعني from in and outside. The threat of the Jews inside al Medina and the threat of Ghatafan, Quraysh and other Arab allies from outside al Medina And Muslims, all the number was only 3,000. Look, all of that, I'm trying to explain the meaning of this means of approach in which the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said, Hazim al-Ahzab. So the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was suggested to buy Salman al-Farisi, may Allah be pleased with him, to dig a trench or a ditch in an area which is wide open, is not naturally surrounded with mountains, doesn't have a natural protection. So right away, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam adopted the, uh, this opinion of Salman and they started digging the trench and it took them one month. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Dina from Egypt, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Naam, Sister Dina, go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry, I just have a question that is really not related to. Uh, go ahead, please. If you don't mind. Now, uh, my question is regarding if someone fasted during Ramadan, the days of Ramadan, due to a sickness that he has, and uh, now he wanted to know, like, how can he make up these days? I mean, he, he can't fast, make up these days by fasting due to his illness. So can he still feed like a, okay. a poor person each day? Yes, if the, person, if the person isn't expected to recover or be able in the future to fast those days, simply uh, resort to the feed you and feed one miskin per each day that you skip fasting during Ramadan. Thank you. Barakallahu feek. Hazim al-Ahzab. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam realized that there is the only available mean. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, prepare as much as you can in order to confront your enemies and frighten them. So we don't have any other mean. Okay, go ahead, let's go ahead and dig the trench. It took them a whole month. They didn't say, oh, it's too much. Why don't you just, Allah, send down your victory and defeat the confederates and we'll be waiting here for that victory. Similar to uh, Bani Israel when they did with Musa and Harun, peace be upon them. No, they did their maximum effort. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did work along with them. And they were starving. So each one was tying a stone around his stomach out of hunger to resist the hunger. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was tying two stones. If people were suffering, once the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was suffering, double the suffering of any of his companions. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Afterward, 
when the Meccans came and their allies, they were confronted with this trench and they didn't know what to do with it. So they besieged Muslims for so many days and Muslims were in terrible conditions because the Jews started making a move inside al Medina, even though they have treaties to support the Muslims, their neighbors in al Medina, to protect them and fight along with them against any enemies who try to attack al Medina. But instead, they violated their treaties and their promises and started moving their troops to attack women and children in al Medina. So what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now sent down his victory. How? Junud lam tarawha. He sent uh, uh, soldiers and hosts that he did not see. And before that, he sent rihan, wind, violent wind, which blew away the tents and the belonging of the Meccans and the Meccan army. And it blinded their eyes with sand and dirt that they have only one choice, which is to run away, to flee the battlefield. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frightened them without any effort from the believers. I mean without any effort of fighting against them. But actually, the believers did their maximum when they dug the, 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 the ditch. And they stood fast defending the ditch and confronting anyone who tried to cross to al Medina site. So that's why Nabi sallallahu invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Allahumma munzil al-kitab, hazim al-ahzab. مُجْرِيَ السَّحَابِ هَازِمَ الْأَحْزَابِ اِهْزِمْهُمْ وَزَلْزِلْهُمْ O Allah, defeat them and shake them and frighten them. And indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the supplication of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We'll take a short break and we'll be back inshaAllah in a couple of minutes. Please stay tuned. Rasulallah, Habiballah, Rasulallah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. We've seen the beautiful invocation and the means of approach that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used in his invocation before confronting the enemy when he said, اللهم منزل الكتاب مدري السحاب هازم الأحزاب اهزمهم وانصرنا عليهم Even though this hadith is pertaining one of the battles but it teaches us very useful lessons in our life For instance it teaches us in the history of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly supported the believers and suffice them in fighting such as on the battle of the trench or the confederates. Look at ayah number 25 of Surah Al-Ahzab in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the believers with his favor upon them during the incident when he says وَرَدَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِغَيْضِهِمْ لَمْ يَنَالُوا خَيْرًا وَكَفَى اللَّهُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الْقِتَالِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ قَوِيًّا عَزِيزًا I love to read this ayah again وَرَدَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِغَيْضِهِمْ لَمْ يَنَالُوا خَيْرًا وَكَفَى اللَّهُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الْقِتَالِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ قَوِيًّا عَزِيزًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drove back the disbelievers in their rage. They were boiling out of anger that they were that close to finish the believers, to finish the Muslims. They ambushed them, the Jews from inside and the confederates from outside, and they have all the means. They almost got them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drove them back in their rage. Lam yanalu khayra. They took no advantage whatsoever of the believers. Nothing, not even a little horse or any more spoils. None. Rather, they lost their power they will turn back in weakness upon weakness. And what else? وَكَفَ اللَّهُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الْقِتَالِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suffice the believers in the fighting, like he fought in their state, on their behalf, by sending the violent wind and the angels to fight these criminals. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ قَوِيًّا عَزِيزًا And Allah is all ever 
قويا powerful عزيزا almighty all you who believe put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you've done your best you tried every possible legal mean that's it don't worry about it in tansuru Allah yansurkum wa yuthabbit aqadamakum you just need to seek forgiveness and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincere dua and wallahi by Allah, Allah will send down his victory and will defeat the confederates. There are many. There are too many. There are many countries. There are many enemies. They've got all the means. So what? So what? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَانَ اللَّهُ قَوِيًّا عَزِيزًا Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Khulud from Jordan, Assalamu Alaikum. How are you, Dr. Muhammad? I'm fine, Alhamdulillah, Barakallahu Feekum. Thank you, Sister Khulud. Dr. Muhammad, may Allah protect you and all Ameen. Muslims in Egypt and everywhere. Ameen, Ya Rabbi. Ameen. Thank you, Sister. I just called to say that our hearts with you and we invoke to you in every prayer. May Allah give you victory. Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Our hearts, our hearts. I don't know what to say, Dr. Muhammad. Really, I'm, we are very sad. We yeah. are, we are, when we see our brothers, sisters are killing in this way, while on, while the world just looking, this is miserable. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah wa shukrullah. Reading the ayat May Allah protect and you. May Allah give you victory. May Allah, I don't know we invoke you in every prayer. I mean, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Muhammad, as you said before, now there are many people who don't know where is the right and where is the wrong. Until now, they are wondering, asking. Naam, barakallahu feeki. Thank you, Sister Khulu. Barakallahu feeki. Jazakillahu khairan. In fact, the picture is very clear. White versus dark. No one can say, well, I'm not sure what's going on. No one can say, I could not really make up my mind because it is very obvious that these guys are lending their hearts, minds, ears and sights to the screen and watching the media which is manipulating their minds, the Western media, which is sometimes is laughable to the extent that you can imagine, you can imagine that would be any people who would believe so. One of these uh, guys, uh, chief judge is saying that President Obama's brother, he's one of the biggest funders of the Islam Muslim world. And he is the main financial guy behind their uh, terrorist activities and so on. So people sitting and saying, I mean, yes, you're right. What can you say to them? What can you say explaining to them what's happening? And they see it only when they lose a family member. Only when they lose a beloved one and they know the story firsthand. Then they say, we were wrong. This is a crisis. I cannot tell you how bad it is, but because we went through this with Burma, with Syria, my wife yesterday couldn't sleep a moment. So I tried to comfort her. Every time she closes her eyes, she sees nightmares, blood, massacres, somebody is getting killed because of the images that has become very normal to see. And unfortunately, there are some people who have no mercy whatsoever. And they still say, well, we don't get it. We don't understand what's going on. Same with my children. And I can imagine if this is the case with my wife who is MashaAllah, half of the Quran, and she teaches Islamic studies, etc. And she's been always assisting me and giving me uh, courage and patience. Then, what about ordinary people? The ayat which I mentioned earlier pertaining to Ghazwatul Khandaq describes exactly, exactly what we're going through right now. وَبَلَغَتِ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرَ وَتَظُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ الظُّنُونَ هُنَالِكَ بِتُلِيَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَزُلْزِلُوا زِلْزَالًا شَدِيدًا Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Zainab from Gambia. Yes. Naam, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi. I'm just calling to say I'm watching the program now. I 
I just want to say um, we are thinking about you guys. It, it, um, earlier on, you were talking about Afia. So every time we pray, we are praying for you. Jazakillahu yeah. khairan. And wallahi, this is what we need most. A dua is the sharpest weapon. You know what the criminals fear most? Wallahi, they fear most your dua. You know, you may say, well, they don't believe in Allah, they don't recognize Allah, they don't fear Allah, but they are afraid of the dua so much. Even at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Meccan pagans who denied his message Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and accused him of lying whenever he raises his hands and he would say Allah, they would rush to cover up his mouth and say, we ask you, Allah, don't make any dua. Same thing. Whenever an imam or a sheikh leading the prayer makes dua, these guys are scared most. And we're praying. Wallahi, not only in the prayers. Every time I turn, I flip over. Whenever I'm asleep, because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, whoever turns over or flips over or gets up at night even to use a bathroom or get a drink, then he says, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وبيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قد يدنه سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله then he makes dua or istighfar but his dua will be answered so every time I flip over I remember that and I make dua may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punish the perpetrators throughout the earth We've seen the massacres recently in Syria. Babies in their bumpers, babies being breastfed, being killed with chemical weapons. Allahu Akbar. May Allah have mercy on humanity. May Allah have mercy on us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten his punishment to be the sin upon the disbelievers, the criminals, and the evil people. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. Now, so from this very beautiful, I learned that we do not long nor pray for tests and trials, even though we know these tests and trials will purify us from our sins and the reward will be in proportion with the level of steadfastness and patience. But we don't ask for it. We don't ask for trouble. We don't ask for sickness. We don't ask for adversity. We don't ask for tests and trials, nor even fight. Rather, we constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for al -afiyah. ولكن اسألوا الله العافية اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية في ديننا ودنيانا وأهلنا ومالنا اللهم استر عوراتنا وآمن روعاتنا واحفظنا من بين أيدينا ومن خلفنا وعن أيماننا وعن شمائلنا ومن ثوقنا ونعوذ بعظمتك أن نغتال من تحتنا this is the dua which the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to recite three times in the morning and likewise in the evening. Constantly asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for al-afiyah, for security, for peace, for safety, for health. Allahu Akbar. Now, secondly, <clears throat> if it happens, it happens. Then we're all for it. Ya ayuhal ladheena amanu. إذا لقيتم فئة فثبتوا واذكروا الله كثيرا لعلكم تفلحون وأطيعوا الله ورسوله ولا تنازعوا فتفشلوا فتفشلوا وتذهب ريحكم واصبروا إن الله مع الصابرين This is a confirmation of the statement in the hadith which if it happens then you have to endure it patiently If you get sick then be patient If you lose your wealth be patient if you lose a beloved one, then be patient. If you lose a limb, then be patient. We don't ask for it. But if it happens, then it is up to him according to his will and leave. Then you have nothing to do but being patient and pleased with his decree for you. فَاصْبِرُوا وَاصْبِرُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ uh, Furthermore, we learn the best means of approach and uh, amongst the lessons that we benefit out of this beautiful hadith, brothers and sisters, is a dua, the prayer or the invocation, which is the sharpest weapon. Even if you have all the means of victory, you should not forget victory is only from Allah. Then you should seek it from Allah. 
and ad-du'a is the sharpest weapon. And this hadith shows us the legitimacy and the recommendation of invoking us, uh, invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against the disbelievers, against the rebellious and the criminals, and the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come accordingly. Now we will begin. Uh, طيب, let's take this call. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mustafa from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Please pray him for me about the Christian effort from enlightened brother. And secondly, I want to know this uh, this thing. I want to know, I want to know his uh, website or get book so that I can send him some message and then he can enlighten me more about Brother Mustafa, the, the, the second question isn't clear at all. The sound wasn't clear. Okay, you're off the line. Uh, we'll try to collect your question even by watching uh, this episode again, but we're running out of time. Uh, Sister Khurud and, and many people even uh, outside this program have asked, what about the laymen and those who are not lifting a finger, they're not making anything, and they're confused. I want to tell you one thing. Uh, I entered the masjid late and the imam made a qunut and he was asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy the perpetrators, those who killed the innocent and uh, uh, men and women and so on and were the main cause of the massacre. So he objected and said, as a matter of fact, I'm happy with what's going on. Not all of us uh, agree to your dua, so don't make dua. I said, no, I will continue to make dua. Hey, wait a minute. When I say, oh Allah, kill the enemies of our deen. What, what bothers you in this? Don't you think that you are a Muslim? Don't you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala vowed to destroy the enemies of the deen anyway? These secular people who try to give hypnotize their conscience by just going to the prayer. But in fact, in fact, their actions are proven otherwise. I would like to give them this hadith one more time which is collected by Abi Dawood, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whenever a sin is committed anywhere on earth, whenever the sin is committed anywhere on earth, then people will be divided into two main categories. The first category, those who are present at the time of committing the sin or the crime, those who witnessed it, those who saw what happened, those who testified to it and furthermore objected. They hated. it. They objected to it. They tried to condemn it by every possible means. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about this category, كَانَ مَنْ شَهِدَهَا فَأَنْكَرَهَا كَمَنْ غَابَ عَنْهَا He will be as if he did not even see it. He will be free, innocent from the crime or sin, and he will be disassociated entirely from the sin of the sinners or the criminals. Innocent. The second category of people. There are only two categories pertaining any sin. Second category are those who did not attend it, did not play a part or a role in accomplishing that sin, yet they liked it. They approved it. So a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَكَانَ مَنْ غَابَ عَنْهَا فَأَقَرَّهَا كَمَنْ شَهِدَهَا He will be treated like the perpetrators themselves. Why? Because he approved it. He liked it. He clapped. He applauded it. He said, more and more, they are thirsty for more blood. So even though they were at home and their hands were not moist with the blood, but they're as criminals as the murderers themselves. This is the statement of the Prophet ﷺ. So each one of us needs to make sure that he is in the category of those who are safe by objecting to that and condemning that and furthermore subhanahu wa ta'ala for al-afiyah 
we conclude by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our deed, to pardon us and forgive us our sins. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. رسول الله حبيب الله رسول الله حبيب الله And only glory to him. He born in humans to be the best and give his best religion to them. Allah our God is the greatest. The one and only glory to him. He born in humans to be the best and give his best religion to them. So why did they ignore that? Forgiving all about him in paradise. Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price